What's going on guys, the CTA Prime back here again. Today we're gonna be taking a look at one of the most interesting Raspberry Pi coolers that I've ever come across. Now this is actually new to the market. It's compatible with the Raspberry Pi 3, 3B Plus, and the Raspberry Pi 4, which I have here. This is known as the Ice Tower Cooler. Retail price on this cooler is around $20 and you can find them on Amazon, Seed Studios, and eBay. I'll leave a link in the description. It was designed and manufactured by the guys over at 52 Pi. They also brought us the armor cases and the dual fan heat sinks for the Raspberry Pi 3 and 3B+. As you can see, this thing is a monster heat sink for the Raspberry Pi. Now in all actuality, when we're talking about real x86 CPUs, this isn't going to cool anything. But it will keep this ARM chip and the Raspberry Pi 3, 3B+, or 4B absolutely freezing. And truthfully, yes, it is a little overkill for the small single board computer, but I really like this thing. It is one of the coolest accessories that I've ever been able to get my hands on for the Raspberry Pi. And real quick, I just want to give you a little comparison here. On the left hand side, I have a mini ITX i7 build that I'm actually retiring with a Hyper 212 tower cooler on it. On the right hand side, we have the Raspberry Pi 4, 4 GB with the ice tower. So I'm really interested on how cool this is going to keep the Raspberry Pi 4. So in this video, I'm going to do a quick assembly and then I want to get into some testing. I'm going to test the Raspberry Pi 4 4 GB without a heatsink. Then I'm going to add a 20 mm aluminum heatsink, followed by the same 20 mm aluminum heatsink with a 40 mm fan on it. Then we'll move over to the ice tower with the fan on and the fan off. Assembly on this unit is very straightforward. It comes with full color instructions, so you're not going to get lost with these. It also comes with brackets for the Raspberry Pi 3 and 3B+, also for the Raspberry Pi 4. And that's what I'm going to be testing out in this video. I have a Raspberry Pi 4, 4 GB model, and these things do get quite hot without a heatsink. Inside of the box, you'll get all the mounting hardware you need, plus some thermal conductive pads. Now, you could always swap this out for some thermal paste if you want to, but I've noticed on these little chips, it really doesn't make much of a difference. So I'm going to be sticking with the included thermal pads for these tests. The first thing you want to do is grab the mounting brackets and just make sure you have the correct one for the left and the right side. They are not interchangeable. They only go on one way. And you also want to make sure that the fan is facing away from the GPIO pins and towards the power in and HDMI. I initially assembled this with the fan facing the GPIO and I just can't access it that way. So I had to kind of swap it out by the end here. On the heat block, there's a hole in each side where the mounting bracket is going to mount with a small screw. Make sure you don't over tighten these. You really don't want to strip this aluminum out. The kit also comes with these brass standoffs. We're going to have to place them in the mounting brackets on all four corners. They're going to mount right up with the holes on the Raspberry Pi and kind of sit above everything. After you have the brackets and standoffs assembled on the heatsink, just make sure everything lines up. And like I mentioned, you really want this fan facing towards the HDMI side. Now it's time to apply the thermal pad or thermal paste, whatever you choose to use. I've always had really good luck and performance with these little pink pads, so I'm glad that they included these instead of the old tissue paper style. Once we have the thermal pad in place, it's now time to mount the heatsink to the Raspberry Pi. Make sure everything lines up, and we're going to be inserting four screws from the bottom of the Pi, all the mounting holes, to the brackets on the heatsink. I personally just started all four of them and then tightened them down across from each other. And finally, it's time to plug in the fan. So if we're looking at the Pi this way, it's going to be the second one down for the positive and the third one down for the negative. It's also all in the included instruction manual. So now it's time to see how this thing performs. I think it looks pretty cool on the Pi. It definitely bulks it up and it's no longer a super small single board computer. It's a lot taller with this heatsink on it. But if you want to keep this thing cool, this is a great option. So before we get into the results, I just want to give you a quick overview of my testing method. First thing I did was grab the idle temps. I booted the Raspberry Pi up, let it sit for five minutes, and captured the idle temps. Then I opened up Chromium. I ran a 720p video for five minutes, did some web browsing, tested thermals on both of those. I also extracted a Raspbian image. It's 1.1 gigabytes. And finally, my extreme test. I used Sysbench to totally max out all the CPU cores. And within four minutes without a heatsink, we're already thermal throttling. It's at 81 degrees Celsius. You can see she's blinking up here. So this is with no heat sink. I've already recorded all of my thermals without a heat sink, and I'm gonna put them inside of a chart along with all of the other ones you're about to see. 
And here's the results I came back with. Now remember, yours may vary from mine. It really depends on your ambient room temperature and all kinds of different factors. But this is what I got out of all of these tests here. My ambient room temperature is 74 degrees Fahrenheit or 23.333 degrees Celsius. The temperatures here are listed in Celsius, so with no heat sink on the Raspberry Pi 4 4 GB model running the newest Raspbian Buster image, 54 degrees at idle. I then added a 20 mm aluminum heat sink and we're hitting 49 at idle. The same 20 mm aluminum heat sink with the 40 mm 5 volt fan was actually very impressive at 36, but the ice tower with the fan off was 31 and with the fan on, 30 degrees Celsius at idle. We got a pretty big drop here from no heat sink all the way up to the ice tower with the fan on. So I'm just going to go ahead and let these charts play out for you. Obviously the ice tower with the fan on was the coolest, but that 20 millimeter heat sink with a 40 millimeter fan did pretty good and that's going to be your cheapest option. The final test I put the coolers through is a very extreme test. I maxed out all four cores for 20 minutes straight, and when the Raspberry Pi 4 hits 80 degrees Celsius, we've hit that thermal throttle limit. It's going to take that clock from 1.5, the stock clocks on the Pi, all the way down to 600 to try to keep itself cool. So you lose a lot of performance. By 3 minutes and 30 seconds, with no heat sink, we already hit thermal throttle. It took the aluminum heat sink 4 minutes and 30 seconds to hit thermal throttle. But interesting enough, the 20 millimeter aluminum heat sink with the 40 millimeter 5 volt fan never hit 80 degrees Celsius in this whole test. At the 20 minute mark, it was only at 67 degrees Celsius, which is really good. And there's going to be no performance increase from that 67 degrees Celsius mark with the heat sink and fan versus the 42 degrees Celsius mark on the ice tower. Of course, the ice tower with the fan on was much cooler than anything. But like I said, there's going to be no performance gain between those two. And you can get out much cheaper with just the fan and the small heat sink. So it's really up to you. I personally love the look of the Ice Tower fan. And out of all of the cooling options that I've ever tested for the Raspberry Pi 3 up to the Raspberry Pi 4, this is definitely at the top of the list for cooling performance minus any kind of liquid cooling. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. That was the Ice Tower cooling system for the Raspberry Pi 4. Also works for the 3 or the 3B Plus if you're interested. I'm also going to leave links for everything else that I used here. In case you just want to go with that smaller heatsink and a smaller fan, like I mentioned, it's really up to you and it does help out with cooling and performance. If you have any questions at all or you want to know anything else about the Ice Tower cooler, let me know in the comments below. But like always, Thanks for watching.